Hello and welcome to Lucky Day, a horror visual novel developed by Jordan, available on HBO. This is actually the prequel to Dr. Morgan's counseling session. So here is Dr. Morgan again, up to his old shenanigans. I guess we'll see like a little bit more of his backstory, I'm assuming. I guess we'll see. A uh, little content warning though, this is a horror game, so there may be some disturbing elements. Viewer discretion is advised. Let's begin. Who are you again? I guess. Well, I don't know. Do we play as the same character again? I don't know how that works. If this is a prequel, you know, but I guess uh, I'll just put my own name again. All right. Your phone buzzed as you walked out of the office building. Taking it out of your pocket, you spot a new message from a friend. The weekend wasn't too busy for you. Not until now, that is. Friend. Okay. That looks like, uh, to me, I don't know. It's very blurry, so it's hard to tell. But to me, that looks like a cat wearing a cowboy hat, you know? Uh, but friend says, Hey, could you drop by the pet store and buy me some stuff? It's not too far from your workplace. Need it ASAP. Send you the money already. Thanks. This is unrealistic. This is not how people text. People don't text like this except me. I text like this, but still, you know? Like, I use, like, proper, like, grammar and spelling. But, like, real life, people don't talk like this. Especially, like, in a casual conversation. They use, like, you know... They use like a lot of like, um, uh, how do you say, like acronyms, you know, and stuff like that. And they, they misspell everything, or at least if they have autocorrect, I guess, but still. Anyway. Uh, seriously? They didn't even ask if you were okay with doing that. What if you were actually busy? What then? Well, right after your prior engagement, you had to save an orphan from a burning building. And whatever. You aren't doing anything noble causes like saving orphans from burning buildings today anyway. Or any day for that matter. Being the great wonderful friend that you are, you set off a reply as you get in your car. Strapping in the seatbelt and starting the engine, you drive in the direction of the pet store. As your friend said, it really wasn't that far. Pulling into the crowded parking lot, you hype yourself up to get the car into the store. Regardless of your thoughts on pets and animals, you really didn't want to be in a crowded place right now, especially at a pet store where irresponsible owners could be rampant. You just wanted a quiet weekend. You want to go home and sleep or indulge in a hobby, but mostly sleep. After a few seconds of mental ping-pong, you turn the engine off and get out of your car, wallet in hand. Do we still have our debit card, as usual? Let's double checking the volume here. This is the max. It's kind of low. Now it's going to be quick. In and out. You can be placed on speedrun website for how fast you get the supplies. With these thoughts hyping you up, you step inside the crowded store. Walking briskly with your phone in one hand, you scan the signs near the top of the aisles as you search for what you had to pick up for your friend. Ow. Uh oh. It looks like you bumped into someone. Sorry about that. You help the person up. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> this is uh, staring, you know, starting off with just a very blank stare. Uh, the person gives you a blank look, though he seems apologetic as he shakes his head. Oh, no, it's my fault. I was just standing in the middle of the aisle. Sorry. Kinda looks like he's gonna cry with the way his mouth is pressed into a thin, trembling line. This guy just looks lost in general. What kind of person spaces out in the middle of an aisle anyway? Was he lost or something? Your question was answered as his gaze wanders again. Anyone could tell that this guy was looking for something but was too lost. Or maybe even a bit overwhelmed. It was a weekend and the store was busy. There are no employees around to help this guy. His face paled a bit as he kept turning all sorts of directions. Trying to find something but being too overwhelmed to take a single step forward. You could help him, but it'd be a time loss with speedrun challenge you impose on yourself. <laughs> you know, you gotta, my, my, I gotta like, you know, I gotta enter my splits. Uh, before stepping foot outside your car. I'm gonna save the game. Mm, nah, I don't know who this guy is. I'm, I'm just do the thing that I want to do. It's not my job, you know. I don't work here. You didn't have time. You're already tired as is. You just want to head home. No, you didn't even want to be here. Silently wishing the stranger the best, you head on your way to the aisle and pick up what your friend needed. Carrying the bag back to your car, you start the engine and pull off the parking lot. It's a quiet drive to your friend's house. A dull ache was starting to bloom in your head. Quickly sending a text to your friend that you were outside in the driveway, you lean back in your chair and sigh. Chair. That you call a... Like, uh, inside the car seat, a chair? Not only a chair, the seat, right? Car seat? Anyway. Home was so close and yet so far. 
he briefly wondered if the guy from the pet store found what he was looking for. Before you can think about it a bit more, there's a knock on your window. Your friend gives you a wide smile as you open the door. No, okay, no, I guess we weren't waiting at the car okay, for some reason because, you know, it was a picture of a house and a car in the driveway. I thought, like, we were, like, in the car. But no, I guess we went home first with the pen. I don't know, anyway. I thought we were waiting in the car. Anyway, um, but yeah, again, there's a knock on your window and your friend gives you a smile as you open the door. Or are we? No, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. No, that makes sense. No, actually. Cars do have windows. I don't know. I'm getting so confused. Anyway. You are a lifesaver. Yeah, yeah, I know. Handing your friend the goods, they thank you again. Here, I made too much to eat. I know you love this stuff. Oh, thanks. A $10 bill was sitting on top, held in place by their thumb. You take the wrapped food from their hands. It's still warm. Freshly made, it seems. Here, you pocket the bill as well. Closing the car door, you wave goodbye as you follow the driveway. No, okay, no. I was confused because they said the uh, game said chair for some reason. They got so mixed up. And, but no, 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 we were waiting in the car. And we were, you know, leaning on our car seat. Anyway, you got some food and $10 in gas money. I thought of a warm, home cooked meal helps you better deal with the headache that was plaguing you. Maybe this wasn't a total waste of time after all. The coming weeks go by as normal and nothing out of the ordinary happens. As expected, ending one. Normal week. There you go. And that's it. That's the end of the game. We just have a very normal day. Easy. What a... You know, th this is my speed run. You know, lucky day, visual novel, speed run. Just have a normal day. No, well, obviously, we're going to see what happens, you know, if you choose other options. Let's see. All right. So, you know, this time, let's, you know, simply um, give our labor for free and help this guy, even though we don't really work here. Because why not? We just we just love helping our capitalist overlords, you know? You may not be saving orphans from our burning building, but you could probably help this random guy. Hey, do you need help finding something? The guy turns to you or turns to look at you and nods wordlessly. So, what do you need help finding? The The hamsters. He mumbles it out, looking down at his feet. Hamsters? He nods and looks up at your face. Hamsters. He nods again. They didn't really look like he was looking at you, more like he was looking at something behind you or your forehead. Maybe he was just bad at eye contact. Okay, let's go then. You look around and spot the sign indicating products related to small animals. Seems like a good place to start. Walking over, you glance over his shoulder to make sure he was following along. He followed closely, though he made sure uh, he made sure or rather though made sure he kept some distance as to not touch you on accident. It seemed like he avoided touching people like the plague, expertly weaving between people without so much as brushing against them. After some walking around, the two finally arrived at the glass displays. Hamsters were sleeping in the bedding, some sniffing around while others drank water and ran in a wheel. The guy you helped had a slight smile as he watched them, eyes soft. His expression was a far cry from the nervous wreck he had bumped into a few minutes ago. Thank you. He was still looking at the hamsters as he spoke. As you were about to turn to leave, he spoke again. Hey, what's your name? If you don't mind telling me, that is. I did get a chance to ask. Um, Sign Snyder, that's me. I gotta go now, glad I could help. You answer quickly as you leave to grab what you needed. As you walk around the store, it felt like something was behind you the whole time. But whenever you look behind you, nothing eye-catching was in your vision. Brushing it off as paranoia, you head to the checkout and carry the bags to your car. You helped out two people. Surely your good deeds will be rewarded one way or another. What goes around comes back around, right? At least that's what you had hoped would happen. The following week, it felt like something was out to get you. You were met with trouble at a practically every turn, and by the end of the week, you were absolutely exhausted. At its worst, it felt like whatever higher being existed was trying to strike you down the worst way possible. At its best... It was an inconvenience annoying you left and right as you tried to survive the day. Whichever end of the spectrum it was, each day ended with you stumbling into your home and passing out in exhaustion. Not even the weekends were safe. Your time was taken up searching for your bicycle and frantically fixing tons of errors and mistakes on the team project. Honestly, you wish you could just catch a break already. Enough of this bullshit week. If superpowers are real, you probably want time manipulation so you can pause everything and sleep for 10 years. You know? Relatable. You know? Uh, I don't know. I guess time, yeah. 
time like i mean zoworodo i guess but also just in general like it's just like yeah sometimes you just want to like take a break you know unfortunately you aren't that lucky staring at the day in your phone you sigh and shut it off it's a new week hopefully this one is better than the last clocking out and changing out a uniform you briefly wonder if you should take a more scenic route home there's still a bit of daylight to burn after all a few extra steps wouldn't hurt Walking down the street, you absentmindedly decide to walk through the nearby neighborhood. A park was nearby, and the houses looked pretty. A sidewalk lined with tall trees that swayed gently in the breeze. The ambience and general vibe always seemed to have a calming effect. You enjoyed taking this route after a tiring shift. Passing by the houses one by one, your eyes eventually landed on the yard sale sign. You palmed your wallet. Did you carry cash today? Curious, you followed the sign and eventually came up to a house with its yard full of knickknacks and other such things. The homeowner greeted you as you inspected what was for sale. Looks like video games? I mean, is that video games? Um. Two. Uh, anyway. I think it was particularly eye catching not until you noticed a familiar logo. Picking it up, you realized it was an official plush from your, one of your favorite pieces of media. It was. Produced in limited quantity, with secondhand sales on auction sites costing a hundred times more than the original price. You were shocked to find such a sought after merchandise in such perfect condition, aside from the very light wear and such. The homeowner must have noticed your peaked interest as you were inspecting the item in shock. There's no way in hell you're going to pass up this opportunity. You deserve to treat yourself for once, especially after all that's happened. You quickly pulled your wallet out, asking the seller how much they wanted. Upon hearing the price, you had to stop your jaw from hitting the floor. No fucking way they were selling it for that cheap. Well, obviously, they didn't know. But, you know probably they're selling their, like, I don't know. They're like their, their kid's like toy or something. I don't know the value of it. <laughs> no, anyway, paying out the cash, you walked away from the yard sale on a happy camper. You successfully scammed the owner, you know, and uh, bought something that should be, should be worth more than it is. And therefore, made a profit um, at the expense of the seller but anyway uh, if you could you throw in a skip and a click uh or you throw in a skip and a click your heels together like a whimsical fellow living in the victorian era you quickly made your way home protecting your new pur purchase with your life when you arrived you looked for a spot in your house to display your new item eventually you found some space in your room when you have like a very spacious house what the heck you know the protagonist is rich i don't know uh you know i mean again I always say this in every game, but like owning a house these, these days is like, you know, it's like, uh, it's worth a lot. So like if, if you, if you have a house, you know, it's like you're doing well, but uh, settling on the shelf in your room, you make some space and put it in a place. You soon completely your luck. Maybe things were taking a turn for a better after all. Huh? You look around your room and then put the smoke detector. Did it beep? Uh, usually when it, yeah when it beeps it's always, it's always annoying you know to change the battery or something like that it was just broken uh you squint the detector before grabbing a chair and testing the battery it's fine what was that the hell is that beeping noise looking around you back yourself into a corner after a bit you heard another beep terrorist has planted the bomb no, um, it came in the direction of you stand from the shelf squinting eventually another beep sounded it's coming from the newly purchased plush. Picking it off the shelf, you back up and sit in your bed, taking a closer look. The beep was definitely coming from here. But did you really want to cut it open? You just bought it, not to mention how sought after this particular piece of merchandise was. Hmm. Save the game. Um, you know, I mean, this is gonna, you know, I feel like it's gonna annoy you when you go to sleep. You're gonna beep all day. But, uh, you know what? Ignorance is bliss. Let's just leave it alone. Whatever. Eh, you ignore it. Choose not to open it. You're just grateful you managed to get such a steal and such a rare plush. You know, don't worry about the GPS tracking device in that plushie. It's fine. There's no way you'll butcher your new merch mere minutes after buying it. After putting it in its place, you get your laptop and spend the rest of the evening browsing the web before heading into bed. You yeah. know? This is dangerously nonchalant about this. Uh, today was pretty good. A package would be coming by the end of the day. Maybe it was all the stress stockpiling during the last week, but you made an impulse buy when online window shopping on Amazon. Just to treat yourself. 
You completely forgot about it until you woke up to an email from the website. It will be delivered by 9 p.m. A glance at the clock is all you need to keep you pacing around. Any minute now. Ever since you arrived home from work, you've been biding your time. Catching up on shows, watching lengthy video essays, or just mindless doom scrolling on social media. Doom. Try to distract yourself from the excitement of an incoming package. Another rock. Another rock? Another walk around the kitchen counters. Check the phone again. Look at the doorway. No, no doorbell ringing. No knock. Another walk around it is. After you threw what felt like a hundred million flap around the kitchen, you finally heard a knock at the door. Practically bolting the door, you open the door and sign for the signature. Your highly anticipated impulse buy was finally here. What is it? Was it worth it? Probably not. But you deserve a treat after surviving last week. Setting the box to the kitchen counter, you open the packaging and unbox the purchase you made. As you were discarding left for packaging in boxes, you heard something plastically hit the floor. Uh, Crouching down to pick it up, you come across a USB flash drive. Yes, um, an extra add-on, you know, free USB that comes with your order. Weird, you didn't order this. Did it fall into the box by accident? Is this someone else's order? Hawking it for now, you finish cleaning up and head over to your room. Once you're sitting comfortably with a laptop in your lap, you plug in the flash drive and open up its contents. It's hard to stop your jaw from hitting the trackpad. We, we, we keep doing that, you know, going like, a woo guy, you know, like, and then the, and then the cartoon thing where your jaw, like, just unhinges. Hundreds, if not thousands, of, of photos, each labeled as contents. The first photo catches your eye. It's a popular show you've been waiting to, uh, wanting to watch recently, but was taken off the air. Looking in, your eyes almost bulge out of your skull as it, its contents review every episode in high quality, you know? From, it, it's, it's like, it's like, tor like torrented, you know, all ready for you. You quickly back out and start going through the other folders. Music, video games and emulators, TV shows and animation. The flash drive carried everything of interest, you know, you can all, you can get it all in Pirate Bay or whatever. Could something like this really be ordered at an online retailer? I mean, technically this would be illegal, you know, you can't actually distribute this you know this kind of stuff it, like, it specifically said like video games and emulators yeah, you can't literally can't distribute like uh roms you know it's actually illegal to do that you know emulators themselves are not illegal but like technically like you know sharing the rom to other people whatever that's illegal you know technically but uh whatever the case may be you're definitely holding on to this i guess we just can keep this even though it's like doesn't belong to us well, we know Probably who this is from, but still. As you explore the folders, you eventually come across a folder that was hidden inside an empty one. Clicking on it informs you that it needs administrative privilege to enable viewing and editing. What could possibly be in here? None of the other folders so far had something like this. Okay. Hmm. Eh. You know what they say, ignorance is bliss. Again, who cares? Just, just dump it. You decide to just delete the folder, who cares? Find some residual files, the personal files belong to an old owner. Sucks for them. Go on mine's all, it's yours now. <laughs> get wrecked. Deleting the folder, you can to go through the old folders on the drive. It's beginning to get late. You had no idea how long you were scrolling until you look at the time. There really was a lot of stuff in the little flash drive. Closing the laptop, you wind down and get ready for bed. What a lucky day! So lucky! It's your day off today. One of the two you have off week. You spend most of the day lounging around until you decide to get something more productive done. Opening your trusty laptop, you start absentmindedly surfing the web until a light bulb lit up in your head. Nowadays, there's a lot of streaming or premium services for everything imaginable. Television, online video gameplay, music. Split across different apps instead of one consolidated site for each form of media, it's easy to have your wallet drain in the span of a month, especially when you simp for like a VTuber and give them like, you know, millions of dollars in donations. No, um, I mean, I don't do that. Anyway, um, look at your bank account statement from last month. You decided that today you'll be canceling your subscriptions to a few services. You know, you're going to cancel your subscription to, um, who's that VTuber? I, I, you know, I don't really watch VTubers, to be honest. You know, ironically, despite how much of a, freaking anime nerd i am i actually don't watch vtubers all that much really but wasn't there that that vtuber that kind of like retired and there was like a big you know i mean not controversy but you know there's, there's a big uh um discussion about it i guess uh pika me or something like that something like that anyway you cancel your subscription to her i guess you know 
he's not going to be streaming anymore, you know? Uh, that money spent for ad free streaming could definitely be spent somewhere else. Starting at the most expensive service you subscribe to, you navigate to the site and open up the account settings. On the payment page, you skim over as you scroll to the bottom and cancel. However, something catches your eye. The next payment due date. Usually, this one renews around the same time every month. Tomorrow, it renews. At least that's what you remember. Looking at the day on the page, it's due next month instead of tomorrow. That's strange. Checking your bank account statement again confirms your thoughts. You paid for the service a month ago, so it should be due around this month of the month rather than next month. No recent transactions or pending balance notices indicate that you paid it early either. Keeping the tab open, you go down the list of subscription services you wanted to cancel. As it turns out, all of your Twitch subscriptions are paid for for free. I guess. Uh, each one had the same discrepancy in due payments. Hmm. I guess someone's paying you know, for subscriptions. Great subs. You know, he's been gifted all these subs. That's all, right? Uh, eh. Eh, it's fine. Whatever. It, you know, it's not suspicious at all. No one totally has our like passwords or anything. Don't worry about it. Well, it's not like you're in a particular rush to cancel your subscriptions. You suppose you could just cancel next month instead of now. Plug the tabs except for one, you decide to spend the rest of the day binging a series you've been meaning to watch. What's what's like a show I've watched? I don't know. Actually, not really recently, I guess. Um, I'm trying to remember. I mean, I watched like a sci-fi show. It was called Severance. It was kind of interesting. Kind of like a show. It's like a show about like. What if you were able to split your time, you know, between work and personal life? But like, what are the ethical implications of that? Pretty interesting. Only had one season though, ended on a cliffhanger. But anyway, uh, today's another day off. A good day to be active, going out to exercise, or whether you want to or not. You recently found the bicycle that you lost last week while walking home from work a day ago, or, or a day or so ago. In celebration, your friend wanted to go for a scenic bike ride on your day off. Right now, you're hanging out near the trail waiting for your friend. Headphones are in your ears, playing out your tunes. After a few minutes of waiting, you hear someone biking up and stopping next to you. It's your friend, who shall remain faceless and never, you know, given like any kind of like art. Uh, greet them, you two talk idly as you get ready for the ride. After a few moments, you're ready and head on your way. You know, I guess the idea, well, I guess the point what developers trying to do is trying to like kind of self-insert you a little bit. You know? That's why the protagonist is also left kind of vague. I guess the friend is also a self-insert, you know, self-insert whatever friend you want, I guess. Just like, pretend that's your friend. Um, the weather was pretty good today. If you're lucky, it's a slight breeze refreshes your body. Not to mention the stunning scenery around you. At a few points on the ride, you pause for a break and took in the scenery around you. Even if you weren't too thrilled about exercising today, the great weather and beautiful landscapes around you made up for it. After biking as much as you could, you eventually loop back around to where you started. Your friends stop behind you, uh, stretching tiredly and taking a sip of their water. As you took your helmet off, you watch your friend take the phone out. Now you're close to civilization, your phones had signal. Your friend tapped away on the phones as you stretch out your limbs. A few minutes later, there was a tap on your shoulder. Turning to your friend, you're met with a face painted with worry. What was wrong? Um, well, I think we're being tracked during our ride. What? Your friend raised her phone to eye level. The screen showed a notification. An air tag was found moving along with you. What? Is it not your air tag? They shook their head. Let's check your bike. You lost it recently, right? Maybe someone planted it there. You nod reluctantly and turn to your bike. Searching the bike, you eventually come across a small air tag underneath, their, uh, underneath the seat. Holding the small disc between your fingers, you think about your next course of action. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, yeah. I think that's, yeah, like a, kind of like a GPS tracking device or whatever. I think I've, yeah, I've heard, I've heard about that. You know, I was looking into things like that. Um, I think, uh, what was it? Like, just in case, like, I lose my keys or something like that. I remember, actually, no, no, it's because, uh, there was that one time, um, I left my USB, you know, my flash drive at where I work, you know, and then, you know, I totally let, let, forgot to get it, and there's some sensitive files in there. I mean, lucky, luckily enough, no one took it or anything, and I did get it back, but, uh, I was thinking, like, maybe I should have, like, a tracking thing, you know, for my USB. Whatever. Like I used to have it uh, on my keys. Actually, I, I put it on uh, my key ring. I put it together, so it was not only my USB but also my keys that I left at work. Again, 
good thing that um, nobody like took it or anything, you know, because it was left in like a public place, um, you know, and then I left it at work. I, I keep forgetting to take it out, you know, when you put a USB in the computer, you put the files, whatever, and then you, you, you're done and then you leave and you get up and walk and you forget to like take it out, you know. Anyway, um, that's why I was thinking of like, you know, having some kind of like tag, you know, or whatever. But as far as I know, they, they only last for like, like, um, like a limited time or something. I can't remember. Like it was like a year or like a few months. I can't remember. But there's like a battery life on it, which I don't know. It just kind of irks me. It makes me like think like, well, okay, that they like keep buying this like every year or something. It's like I don't know. For me, uh, that, I feel like that's not worth it. So instead, you know, I, I actually I took the USB out of my key ring and simply, um, you know, keep it separately. So if I lose my USB, at least I don't lose my house keys. <laughs> but anyway, um, but I throw it away. No, who cares? You know, wait, should I save the game? Let me save the game first. Actually. Let me like roll back, save the game, and then throw it away. You know, I have, it turns out, you know, I have time manipulation powers. You know, the character was talking about that before. As it turns out, you do have time manipulation powers. It's called like, you know, the, sc the scroll wheel. Uh, you don't care that much. Holding this for a second, you take aim at the deepest part of the trail before throwing it into the woods. Your friend gives you an incredulous look. What'd you do that for? What? Why don't you throw it away? Aren't you worried or curious of who it belongs to? Eh. <laughs> it's like, we've been just living dangerously this entire time, so who cares? Nope. Sighing, your friend pockets her phone and grabs her bike. Well, that's that then. Let's get going. You both head off after that, chatting along the way. After dropping your friend at their house, you head on your own way home. You spend the rest of the evening winding down to mentally prepare for your work tomorrow. A few hours and a warm microwave dinner later, you settle down in bed. It's another day at work. Not a particularly bad one, nor was it good. You say you were rather ambivalent about it at all. Better than last week, if anything, you suppose? Last week, you were tasked with a team project. Regardless of how well you did when working in groups, it ended up being the most irritating project you had a displeasure working on. The co-workers you had to work with were unreliable and arrogant, opposing any change you proposed. Working on the project itself was no problem, and having to work with team members made an absolute drag. As the thought crossed your mind, you ran to one of your co-workers you had to work with on the project. Oh, sorry. Wait, 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 wait. Before you walk past, he grabs your shoulder and stops you. Huh? Uh, hey, I'm really sorry about last week. I realized I was uh, insufferable to work with, and it was absolutely my fault the project was botched. I uh, think I could treat you to some food after this. Oh, I don't know. I insist. Really, any place you want. I'll be waiting around outside after work, okay? You aren't given a chance to respond as he pats you on the shoulder and walks away. Well, it's not like you had any plans after work today anyways. Free food doesn't sound half bad either. You didn't have to have, uh, you didn't want to have microwave dinner two nights in a row. With the free food motivating you, you continue to go about the work day, looking forward to it. As you left work, you text your coworker to let him know you're outside. You look around. He's nowhere in sight. That's weird. Checking your text, you can see that he's already read your message. You decide to wait around a little bit more in just in case. Five minutes pass, then ten minutes. Around the twenty minute mark, your patience was starting to wear thin. Before you can send another text, you receive two messages from your coworker. Coworker, number twenty-three. Can't make it, sorry, buy yourself something good. Goringi. <laughs> Goringi sent you fifty bucks. What? First of all, why is that his name on the app? Second of all, he can't make it. You're not about to decline a free 50 bucks, but on the other hand, it's a bit suspicious. This coworker wasn't one to just flake like that. He may be hard to work with, but he wasn't unreliable. No, he totally wasn't just murdered just now. Oh well. Nah, that's odd, but you suppose there's nothing you can do about it. After a bit of thinking, you decide to accept the money. On your way home, you decide to treat yourself to a restaurant you like. You know, 50 bucks, that's... I mean, yeah, that's like... It's like a meal, like, like a restaurant, you know? You make sure to bring home some leftovers as well. Nothing special, but the food is good at least. You have to thank your coworker the next time you see him. Hopefully the next team project you work on will go better too. There won't be a team. <laughs> They're all dead. No, the week has come to a close and time marches on toward the next day. The day has been as normal as ever with no events standing out. Looks like your lucky streak has come to an end. Maybe the balance of bad luck and good luck has been restored. I thought you are complaining though. The streak of luck you had definitely cheered you up after the abhorrent week you had before. You're really thankful for that. If only every day could be lucky. If only every day could have a mysterious person. 
you know, guardian angel manipulating events in the background to make you ha think you're lucky, but actually it's just someone doing that for you. And like maybe expecting something later on in the future as if they're owed something, even though they did everything, you know, out of their own, uh, um, you know, uh, out of their own, uh, well, I don't know what the word is, out of their own conviction? No, not the start word. You know, they, they did it on their own without asking. Anyway, with a pep in your step, you go about your day looking forward to what will happen next. Hey, hey this is a lucky day. You know, don't worry about it. That's, you know, all of those strange coincidences has nothing to do with this guy stalking you the entire time. Don't worry about it. <laughs> anyway. All right. So that was kind of like uh, a little, how do you say, uneventful, really, because you chose, you know, I chose all the choices to to basically be stupid you know and like you know be just really dumb but it turns out it just kind of worked out i don't know anyway well let's see um all right let's uh go all the way back here this is when we bought that really like um you know expensive plushie which you know we got a deal on and i heard some there was some beeping let's crack it open take a look you carry it to the kitchen and set it on the counter Take out a knife, you silently apologize to your fellow fans. You prepare to cut into the merch. You, you cut into the, um, you know, the Toho Fumo, I guess. Which I've heard is like really expensive for some reason. It's difficult to summon the resolve to actually start. After a few minutes of staring, you realize there's a tiny little slit in the fabric. You put the knife down and push your finger in. Tearing it open a little wider, your finger brushes against something hard. Picking out some of the stuffing, you reach in and pull out the small object hidden within. Oh, that's a camera. That's a camera that was hidden inside your plush that you just bought. Okay, <laughs> you're gonna put it in your bedroom, eh? You stare at the camera until it beeps again, wincing at the sound. Inspecting the camera, you find there's a slot in it for an SD card. Popping it out, you leave the kitchen. Quickly grabbing the laptop from your room, you return to your living room and open it up. The SD card easily inserts in the slot. You're able to explore, or, or yeah, it easily inserts in the slot, and you're able to explore the contents. You navigate to the photo directory and look at the contents. Several videos were saved on it, and you watch them one by one. As you go through the videos, you come across what it seems to be a test recording. Is that a pair of hands is up to the camera, positioning it within what looks like stuffing? You make a wild guess that this is when it was planted in the plush. When he backs up, you can see his face more clearly. That's... Is that the guy you met from the pet store? Like from a week ago? What the fuck? You watch in morbid curiosity as he walks to the yard sale and heads to the homeowner who seems eager to be able to sell another item. Before you could go through another video, a knock on your door makes your blood run cold. No, was that a live camera? Did he have a live stream? <laughs> He slowly turns toward the sound, grabbing a knife from the counter and walking cautiously to the front door. Looking through the peephole in the door, you feel the hairs on your neck rise. It's him. He's just standing there awkwardly, waiting for you to open the door. A cloth mask is over his face, but you recognize the distinct blonde hair with strawberry blonde tips. You're unsure what to do at this point. Backing away from the door, you consider your options. Call the cops? No, they wouldn't get here in time. Let him in. You're not a fucking stupid. He's definitely gonna do something. Run? Well, your car's in the garage. Not a bad choice, actually. As you quiet, as quietly as you can, you pocket your keys and make your way to the car in the garage. Hopping in your car, you grip the steering wheel with one hand. Key in the ignition. The garage door opens pretty slowly, but if you time it just right, you drive with only a few scratches on the roof. Your life is worth more than the car you got from a second-hand dealership. Start the car, you open the garage. The moment is... Uh, it's open wide enough, you slam your foot on the gas. Bolting out of the garage, you turn as quickly as you can out of the driveway and make your escape. In the rearview mirror, you see the stranger watching you drive off. Wait, but, what if, but if you just run away, what will he do? Considering your options, you decide to... No, that's, that's, a lot of, that's a lot of options. But like, I think it's all the same options though. It's like, you run him over your car, hit him with your car... Turn the car around and run him over and try hitting him with your car. <laughs> it's like, these are all the same options, actually. There's no actual real choice. Um, all right. I mean, I feel like this is just a lawsuit waiting to happen, but uh, sure. 
Time to run him over. I, I put the pedal to the metal. You make a U-turn and drive back towards your house. You do, you do a sick drift as you do it. He's in the middle of the road now. Surprised to see that he came back. It looks like he made an attempt to run after the car. Not stopping, you press on the gas. Aiming right for him. Gas, gas, gas. When he realizes that you're about to run him over, he tries to run the way. When you chase him down, you manage to hit him with your car. You just simply commit like vehicular manslaughter. In fact, this is not manslaughter. It's actually just homicide. Uh, bringing the car to a stop, you step out and look at the man who collapsed on the road. Is he dead? Did you just kill a man? Well, you kind of had it coming with the whole hidden camera and showing up at your house stuff. You hope your neighbors didn't just witness you running someone over. Taking your phone out of your pocket, you call the police and text your friend. Despite barely even starting, looks like this week is a bust. Heading to hit and run. You, you gotta have a call a lawyer. You better call Saul. Because um, I don't know if that's justified as self-defense, at least in Canada, you know. You have to like be very careful in regards to self-defense. Like if someone's just like simply invading your private property you're not really allowed to just murder him you know maybe you can do that in i think texas you know there's it's, uh, texas is infamous in the in the in, the, in america or like the stand your ground law or whatever like if somebody's invading your pri private property you can like take out your shotgun and just murder him again and you, you're allowed to do that i don't know i don't think you can do that in canada where i live anyway but I don't know. I don't know what the laws are. I don't know what we're, I don't know what the game takes place actually. You know what, what country is this? I have no idea. <laughs> anyway, well that's that ending. All right. Okay, and now we're here when you get that USB with all a bunch of like you know pirated content. I'm assuming, and we find like a mysterious folder. Let's open it. Let's see what's inside. <laughs> is it is porn folder? No, yeah, probably not. I don't think this game would do that. Anyway, uh, we decide to open the folder. The laptop seems to lag a bit as it struggles to load the content. There you see is actually just his old uh, YouTube videos, you know. <laughs> just just like me where I have I have like a bunch of like, you know, just old videos that I save my hard drive, which I have that have to delete eventually though. Like I, I can't keep them all there, so I I do eventually delete them. But it does take up a lot of space. Anyway. However, once it loads, you can feel your blood run cold. Countless photos and videos. The subject vary from each, but they all share a common trait. They were all related to you. Your house, your car, your belongings, you, you, you. A pit begins to form in your stomach as you scroll through the folder. It's practically never ending. Whoever took these photos and videos have been telling you for the past week. The thought makes you sick. You are so overwhelmed you fail to realize you are being stopped. Paranoia sets, you, uh, sets in as you quickly get up from where you're sitting, looking around. Your window curtains open, just a crack. Closing the curtains, you grab your laptop. Opening your closet, you take a seat in the dark and open your laptop back up. You could use this flash drive as evidence, couldn't you? Would the police even believe you? Oh, this flash drive I randomly found that totally doesn't belong to me has photos and videos of my house. Yeah, right. They definitely believe that. You definitely wouldn't be, be written off as a nut job wasting precious time with the police. Well, you know, I guess it depends. But like, if you really did get the police to really research it, they could tell if it belonged to like a different um, place, you know, if you copy files from a different place, it could tell like what the timestamp is on that, you know, and everything. I don't know. Maybe. But that really depends if you actually get to that point, you know. Because I imagine not every um, resource will be available if you just ask for it, you know. But as you rack your brain for your ideas, a light bulb switches on. What if you can investigate things yourself? Clicking one of the photos, an image of a shirt you had lost, you open the properties for the pick. You know, it's that easy. Just right click properties. There. The metadata for the image file, you know, which if you were smart, you could easily, you know, scrub. But like, I guess, I guess the person who's stalking us isn't so smart. Damn. Whoever took these photos used a pretty expensive camera. As you scroll through the metadata, your eyes land on the GPS section. Wait, <laughs> that doesn't exist. Is that a real thing? I don't know if that's a real thing or not. Uh, latitude and longitude. You know, I mean, again, there are ways to check like where the files came from and the, at what time. You know, and even if you delete the files, technically the files still stay in your in your drive. You know, I don't know how it works on a flash drive, but in your hard drive anyway. If you you know delete stuff, it it isn't really deleted. You can still you know uh, restore it technically, 
it simply does not appear in your computer, you know, and will be overwritten eventually. But anyway, but uh, taking your phone out and opening a map app, you type in the coordinates you saw on the screen. The location wasn't too far away. Walking distance. All right, you're doing this. I'm going to stalk the stalker. Crawling out of your closet, you stand up and put your laptop away. As you put a jacket on, you consider bringing a weapon. The Swiss Army knife in the drunk drawer will have to do. Bring an entire kitchen knife wouldn't be good unless you want to be mistaken as a serial killer. Uh, I guess it depends how big the Swiss Army knife is. I have, I actually have a Swiss Army knife thing, or whatever, but I guess it's the uh, very small one. It's not very sharp, so I don't know if you can stab someone with that. It's like very, it's like very small. Um, armed and ready, you start heading out to where the images were taken. I guess it depends. Uh, I guess one of the bigger ones, you know, bigger Swiss Army knives. Maybe specifically like a knife. I don't know. After a bit of walking and a few detours to avoid being seen by cars, you arrive at your destination. You find yourself in an old park. Nature seems to be reclaiming the space of all the overgrown grass and plants. Checking the map app, it's clear. This is where the photo was taken. Some sort of clue had to be nearby. Turning on the flashlight on your phone, you begin to search as you part the tall grass with your other hand to see the ground better. After a bit of searching, you come across a cardboard box that sticks out more than the trash you've seen. It was nobly cleaner. Seems like whoever had put it here was trying to hide it if the, cl uh, if the cloth over it was anything to go by. Holding your breath, you pull the cloth off and open the box up. It's the shirt you lost. And a sock that you thought got missing in the wash. Is that the lint from the lint tray of your dryer? Hmm. Also, you know, this is not my this is not my fault. The game is, I guess, doing a weird effect where everything is like really low bit rate. You know? As you feel the anxiety had been rising in your chest, seize your heart as you go through the other contents of the box. Who did this? Why? Why you? In your state of paranoia, you suddenly become aware of something watching you. A presence right behind you. Right behind you. The realization makes your blood run cold. You barely have time to reach for a Swiss army knife before a cloth is over your nose and mouth. Flailing around desperately, you try to scream for help only for the cloth and hand over your face to muffle your cries. Lungs burning, you're left with no choice but to hail the cloth. Is it long before your head grows fuzzy and your body goes limp? Last thing you see is a man with blonde hair. Eyes apologetic as his mouth opens to speak. Sorry. Ending 3. Secret stash. What's he doing with all that stuff? I'm, I mean, we know why he's doing all that stuff. Anyway. Just loves stealing your socks, I guess. Mm. Smelly, smelly socks. All right. So back over here as well. This is the situation where our subscriptions are like suspicious. You know, they're suspiciously like paid for for some reason. So let's investigate further. Well, that's not right. Clicking on payment information, you review the details in the section. Immediately, your eyes lock on the payment method. Every subscription service is linked to your card, but what you know and what you see are two different things. Underneath the payment method is a PayPal you didn't recognize, linked to your account. That's definitely not right. You quickly go through each account and find that all linked to the same PayPal. Did you get hacked? But why would they pay for it? Isn't the point of hacking someone's account to leech off of their benefits? You take note of the email address linked to the payment method and open up the email composer. Determined to get to the bottom of this mystery, you type in a short message and send it off. There are a few questions on your mind, but you keep your email short and straight to the point. Taking the email on its way, you lean back in your chair, staring at your ceiling to think. After a few minutes, you get a notification. Leaning forward, you see that's a reply from the email. The initial message you sent was a question whether or not they knew their PayPal was linked to several of your accounts. You expected it to be a misunderstanding, but the reply you got filled you with unease. I linked it to your account on purpose. Sorry, am I being a bother? You know, this is the wrong thing to do, Mr. Stalker. You shouldn't give, give away that you did this on purpose, but well. Who the hell was this person, and why would they pay for your subscriptions themselves? Typing him another reply, you ask him exactly that. You get a response a few minutes later. I'm Oliver Morgan. <laughs> oh. As for why, well, it's because I like you. You know, I do this roundabout way where I invade your privacy. And do good things for you, but like, it's like kind of creepy. You weren't sure if you felt flattered or creeped out. The name this person gave you rang, rang no bells whatsoever. After a few more back and forth emails, you end up becoming more and more creeped out. 
The general tone of his messages were polite, but the contents of each one unnerved you. Each one just preached about how he loved you and been watching you for a while. Apparently, he has seen you worrying about the subscriptions and took it upon himself to help you. At this point, you were thoroughly creeped out. Typing your final email, he asked him to leave you alone or you'll call the authorities. Sending it off, you block his address and start changing your passwords. You cancel all the payments as well. As nice as it was to have all this free stuff handed to you on a silver platter, the situation was just too creepy. Once you were finished, he shut your laptop off and got up to get ready for bed. You know, consent is important. You know, if you want to pay for someone's subscriptions, yeah, you gotta get their consent first. You know, that's really the moral of the story. <laughs> anyway, that night, you double check the locks and windows around your house. Just in case. A knocking sound wakes you up. Uh, oh, hello, uh, crazy Nux, by the way, Monka S, you know? I guess the entire game would be Monka S. Well, if the thing is, you know, in the, in the previous, uh, one of the previous playthroughs anyway, you can choose to remain ignorant, actually. And, you know, it would be the opposite. You'd be like, you know, be living an easy life. But anyway, uh, a knocking sound wakes you up. Rolling over, you check the time. 5 a.m. You know, who, who, who the hell comes, yeah, knocking your door at 5 a.m.? Also, I got a call on my cell phone. I got a call in real life. The stalker is calling me in real life. No, probably just a scam caller. Anyway. Uh, who the hell is knocking on your door this early in the morning? As you get up, the knocking gets more and more intense. Fists were practically slamming your door as you groggily got up. Opening door to your room, you abruptly ran into something. Well, actually, it's someone. Looking at the face, you're met with a surprised look from a blonde man. Have you seen this guy somewhere before? Realization sets in, causing you to jump away and slam the door shut in his face. What the fuck are you doing in my house? I just wanted to talk. Did you break in? Well, I mean I did, but... You weren't having this. Running to your bed, you start dialing the police. Without you holding the door shut, Oliver opens it. When he sees you on the phone with the police, he quickly walks over to try and stop you. Pushing away when he got too close, he tried to escape somewhere else. However, gripping your ankle stops you in place. Looking down, Oliver is grabbing your ankle with both hands, looking up at you pleadingly. Can we just talk? <laughs> you know, can we just talk? <sighs> and another another option here where we don't really have an option. I uh, save the game anyway, just in case, but funny how the developer keeps doing this, but uh, I can kick my head. Give him the old boot, hit him with your foot, or consider talking to him, and then kick him in the head. Ah yes, the old, like, uh, you know, bait and switch. Boom. Use your other foot to kick him in the head. Somehow you managed to kick him hard enough to knock him out. This was surprisingly easy. You drag him in the bathroom and close the door, holding the door shut, just in case. Pretty sure you call with emergency services, all you have to do is hold the door shut and hope he doesn't wake up. Mm, not very good idea. I don't know. I feel this is a bad idea. At least prop it up or something. You know, you have a chair, right? I see a chair right here. Prop it up with a chair or something, you know? Don't just use your body weight. It's not going to work. I feel like, but... Oh, I guess it works. <laughs> As it turns out, never mind. It takes about half an hour for authorities to arrive and take him away. After some questioning, you're allowed to rest easy. Hopefully, that's the last you'll see of him for a while. Ending 4. Breaking and entering is illegal, by the way. Not allowed to do that. If this was America, you know, you get a shotgun in the face. Okay, so we're back over here. This is when we went um, bike riding with our friend. We found a little like GPS like uh, air tag thing. Let's contact the owner, you know, let's confront them. Yet again, by the way. Do you think we could find, uh, we could find out who this belongs to? Yeah, hold on. You watch your friend open up an app and pluck the air tag from your hands. After a little bit, an email and phone number popped up. No, it's that easy. Exchanging, uh, exchanging, exchanging a glance with your friend, you type the phone number into your phone. Uh, should I text or call or maybe we should go to the cops? How much help would the cops be though? You know, again, you have to, you, you have to have the the right, um, I guess, uh, evidence. You know, the right proof to back up your claims. Otherwise, you know, police are not gonna do anything. You know, I mean, usually police are, um, 
basically uh, useless in almost every story, you know, in every fictional story ever, unless you're the cops, like, unless the main characters are the cops, um, they're kind of useless usually. But anyway, I don't know. After a bit back and forth with your friend, you both agree on calling the speaker on. You both headed to a nearby cafe and sat outside, leaning on the table. Taking your phone out, you look at your friend before gathering a resolve and calling the number. A, ro a ringtone could be heard nearby. Looks like your friend heard it too. The two of you look around before the ringtone is suddenly cut off. Someone answered the call. Hello? The voice on the other end uh, sounded familiar. Exchanging a glance with your friend, and, uh, or you start talking. I'm um, high. Hello. I found an air tag linked to this number. I was wondering if you lost it. Oh no. I didn't lose it. Is that so? Sorry for bothering then. I put it there on purpose. What? I put it there on purpose. The air tag. Your friend looks thoroughly creeped out as you freeze up. Grip on your phone tight. What? Why did you do? I put it on your bike. Something slams the table you're sitting at. Looking up, your friend has stood up, scanning the area. Suddenly, they grab your phone. We know you're here watching us, you asshole. Come out! The other end has gone quiet. Hey, give it back for a second. You take your phone back. Can you explain yourself, please? If you're still there? I just wanted to make sure you were okay. That's all. What do you mean? As the voice on the other end explained their behavior, your friend was relentless, uh, relentlessly, no, restlessly pacing back and forth on the lookout for anything suspicious. At the end of the explanation, you sighed. This is way too creepy, but it sounded like he didn't really know that. Hey, listen. Before you could get another word in, your friend snatched your phone again. You're fucking creepy, dude. If you don't uh, leave them alone, we're, uh, or we don't leave Zion alone, we're, take this up with the police. The other end went quiet again. Answer me. Click. They hang up. I don't know if that's a good idea. You know, if you're, if you're too overly aggressive, you couldn't record the phone conversation, then you could, like, submit the evidence in court. <laughs> and then you could, like, you know, sell in the prison. But oh well. You take your phone back with a sigh. Think he'll actually leave me alone? He better. That was serious, you know. You have a real stalker in your hands. And that's the thing, too. You know, we, we mentioned police and everything. Stalking is, like, really hard to, like, you know, um, convict. Because you have to prove it, right? It's like, it's not really, it's hard to prove if someone's just like stalking you and like, they're just, all they're doing is watching you and technically it is illegal, but how do you prove that, right? So, like, yeah, that's why you have to gather evidence, like, you know, make sure that you can actually prove the fact that someone's stalking you and so you can get like a restraining order and stuff like that. But anyway, uh, yeah. You take the air tag back out and look at it with a frown. Here, I'll hold on to it. That way he won't know where you are at every waking moment. Um, that's a bad idea. I think he's gonna kill you. Oh well. <laughs> After you get off work tomorrow, we should head straight to the police station. Yeah, let's do that. You know, I, I think the smart thing to do is actually turn off the air tag, you know? There's a battery, I think, inside. You should, like, turn it off or something. Or take it out. I don't know. Uh, it's kind of hard to do, I guess. I'm assuming those are not easily opened up, but anyway. Uh, I'll walk you home. Uh, I'll walk you home. Come on. You haven't realized how late it had gone. Walking home, you should have your friend to try to relieve the tense atmosphere. But get home safe, okay? You send them off and watch them walk until they're out of sight. Turning to your house, you unlock your door and step inside. Pushing your bike to the garage, you set it down against the wall and head in. Deciding to heat something up for dinner, you head into the kitchen. You put in a frozen microwave meal and set the timer. Feels like someone's watching you the whole time. As your food heats up, you decide to close the curtain. However, the feeling of being watched doesn't go away. Before you can investigate anything, the microwave beeps. You take your dinner out and sit down to eat. It's been a long day, and a warm meal will definitely help you feel more at ease. It tastes a bit off, but you don't really remember how long it's been sitting in the fridge. <laughs> You're gonna have diarrhea in the morning. Uh, maybe you should have ordered something instead. Oh well. After you eat, you wash the dishes and head to your room. Hmm? Oh. <laughs> In the middle of your room stands a man. Looks like he was waiting for you. <laughs> this entire time, I guess. His face lights up as you enter the room. Finish eating already? How was the meal? What the fuck are you doing in my house? Picking you up. What? I'm here to pick you up. 
I thought I should come a bit earlier than I initially planned. You know, since you guys plan to go to the police and all, I can't have that happening. He almost sounds apologetic. Anyways, that's why I decided to wait for you instead. Your head was spinning with confusion. Wait, what? You shouldn't be here. You need to leave. Oh, sorry, but that won't be happening. What? I told you already. I'm here to pick you up. It with a wave of nausea, you try to prop yourself up against the doorframe. You suddenly felt dizzy and weak. The man walks over, arms on, ready to catch you. Afraid, you back up and try to get away. Your attempt fails as you hit the floor. The last thing you see before you lose consciousness is a kind smile contrasted by dark eyes. Ending 5. Tagged. You got tagged. You're it. Hmm. I wonder what happened to the friend, though. I must, I mean, it's, I feel like it's very much implied that they died. You know, I think our friend was murdered along the way. And then he's here. Though I'm surprised he doesn't have any blood on his hands, you know. I guess he got, he, he you know, went and took a quick shower. Anyway. All right. So this is when uh, our co-worker invited us for dinner, but they couldn't make it. They gave us 50 bucks, I guess. And that was very suspicious. So we should look for him anyways. Sure, a free meal is good, but a meal shared with another person is good too. You also can't help but worry if something happened. It's only been about 20 minutes or so. Maybe he couldn't have gone far? Pick your direction to walk in, you scan the streets as you walk. Uh, as you walk. Not the best strategy, but it's not like you had a better one. You had no idea where the guy lived after all. You know, I, I, I was actually thinking that it was suspicious that the guy was... Like the co-worker, apparently, that we weren't really getting along with was actually, you know... Um, inviting us for like dinner or whatever. But that was kind of strange. I thought he was being like, you know, intimidated doing so. But now he's like disappeared. So I, I think he's like, it's not the case actually. <laughs> but anyway, uh, who knows? What if you get lucky? Every now and then you call his phone number as you want. It's unlikely, but there's a chance he may answer. This continued for a while. After a few minutes of walking, you called again. You pass by an alleyway as it rang. So on your pace, you lower your phone from your ear. It was faint, but you could definitely make it out. A ringtone was coming from deeper within the alleyway. Maybe it was just a coincidence? Hanging up, you call the number again. Okay, not a coincidence. Putting your phone away, you walk deeper into the alleyway. A wave of unease as it hits you as you get closer to the ringing. Fearing for the worst, you look around really quick and spot a metal pipe on the ground. You pick it up and keep venturing further in. Turning the corner, you feel your eyes bulge out of your skull as the smell of iron hits your nose. There lies your co-worker with something standing over him. You can barely make out the details of the scene unfolding before you, uh, before you due to how dark it was. How troublesome. Did I go too far? No, maybe not far enough. The figure standing over your co-worker raises something. A bat? Over their head. Fight or flight kicks in as you rush forward with a yell, shoving the figure away from your co-worker. Hmm, that's interesting. <laughs> you would think you were you run away, but no, nope, we fight, I guess. Ugh. Looking down at your co-worker, he was heavily injured with blood running down his face. Thankfully, it seems like he was still alive. <laughs> that's a surprise. His chest heaved with effort. Looks like he's barely holding on to consciousness. Looking behind you, the figure from before is staggering to his feet. Who? Hi, Slider. This guy knows me? <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry for causing you trouble. You'll forgive me, right? Who are you? Oh, we haven't met. I mean, we have, but you probably don't remember me. But I remember you. They're standing up straight now, facing you. You can barely, uh, barely make out what he looks like. Blonde hair and dark brown eyes. This guy's familiar for sure. Sorry for troubling you. I'm sorry. You probably think less of me now, don't you? It's not my fault, is it? I just wanted to help. I'm sorry. The man staggers forward, bat dragging on the ground. You know, you, you don't, you, I, I, you know, I'm, it's not a very convincing apology when you're like dragging a bat, you know, walking towards someone. You ready your own we a weapon, shooting your coworker. What weapon do we have? You know, I have a plus 10 longsword that I unsheathed. Get out of the way. I hate to hurt you. No way. He needs a hospital. No, no, no. I'm really sorry about this. He lunges for you. Looks like there's no way, no talking your way out.
Uh, again. Oh, I, I guess we we took the pipe. I I, got, I thought he was the one with the pipe, but it, there was a pipe mentioned. That I didn't realize we picked it up. I, I didn't catch that. But uh, defend yourself, channel your inner pro baseball player, and beat the shit out of him with the pipe. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. Like a batter about to strike a home run, you swing the pipe as hard as you can at him. Thud. Ugh. The man falls to the ground, knocked out for good this time. Hopefully you didn't kill him, you know, because that's, that's also a lawsuit, you know, waiting to happen. You quickly take out your phone and call for an ambulance before checking on your coworker. Hey, you okay? He's passed out too, breathing faintly. At least it looks like he'll survive, but he won't survive these hospital bills if we live in America, but anyway. Probably. Dragging him out of the alleyway, you patiently wait for the ambulance. Looks like you won't be getting that free meal of your coworker anytime soon. Ending six. Let's get food next time. <laughs> okay. Hey, we saved our coworker. That's good. And we just beat up our stalker. So, I mean, you know, not necessarily a bad ending, but, uh, you know, it's funny how, like, we can just beat up our stalker. You know, it's funny how, you know how the trope of Yandere's and a lot of animes, like, usually, no matter what they do, even if they're like, you know, physically weaker than you or, you know, physically weaker than the protagonist anyway, um, you know, the protagonist never really hurts them. But it's funny how like in many endings, we actually just beat up our stalker. We could, we could just fight back you know, really easily, actually. Anyway. All right. So let's do this again. This time, let's not just simply be dumb, but also not be so aggressive that we, you know, escalate the situation so quickly. Let's just be cautious this time. So, so this is, uh, again, about the plushie, so let's think about this later. While you do feel a bit curious, you brush it off and decide not to cut open the merchandise. At least not right now. You feel a sinking pit of anxiety in your stomach, but the guilt of cutting it open wins you over. For now, you decide to put it in the box in your closet. Hopefully, you can't hear the beefy from there. After putting it in its place, you get on your laptop and spend the rest of the evening browsing the web before heading to bed. Alrighty. And this is when, um... We, you know, picked up that suspicious USB. Let's ignore it for now. We're not going to delete it like an idiot, but we're going to ignore it for now. You keep it on the drive for now. You decide what to do with it later. Who knows what might be on it? What if there's a virus or something? <laughs> I mean, the whole USB itself could be a virus, actually. But uh, it's beginning to get late. You have no idea how long you're scrolling until you look at the time. And there's really a lot of stuff on that little fast drive. Closing laptop, you wind down and get ready for bed. What a lucky day. So, again, now uh, we're checking our subscriptions, you know, it's suspicious that it's being paid for. Let's simply just change our password. I mean, that's kind of like the smart thing to do, really. I mean, that's a normal thing to do, really. You know, if you feel like your account's been hacked or whatever, it's a good idea to just change your passwords just in case. <laughs> you know, unless your whole computer is hacked, in which case maybe there's a keylogger. <laughs> but, you know, usually you just change your passwords. Uh, swallowing the saliva that gathered in your throat, you spend a few minutes looking at the due dates again. This was definitely weird. You decide to change your passwords, all of them, with the use of Password Manager, which, you know, sponsored by da 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 da. I don't know. I don't know what it does. I'm not actually sponsored by Password Manager, but like, I imagine if this was like a, if I was like a popular YouTuber or whatever, I'd be like sponsored by like a Password Manager, and that's where I like doing like an ad or whatever. Like, what's that guy? Linus Tech Tips, you know? This is sponsored by da 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 da. By, um, I don't know. Super duper password manager where you can change all your passwords in one easy click. Boom, you know, know anyway. Uh, by the time you finish, unease sits, uh, blah, blah, blah. unease still sits in your stomach like a rock. The feeling wouldn't be going away anytime soon, so you decide to distract yourself. By closing the tabs except for one, you decide to spend the rest of the day binging a series you've been meaning to watch. Okay, so this is when there was the air tag or your bicycle. Let's, uh, hold on to it this time. This is definitely something you should look into, but maybe not right now. You don't want to worry your friend. I think I'll hold on to this for now. Your friend still looks worried as you pocket the air tag. Are you sure? Will you be okay? Yeah, I'll be okay. Promise. Let's head back. I'll text you when I'm home. Reassuring your friend, you grab your bike. Your friend still isn't entirely convinced, but grabs their bike nonetheless. You both head off after that, chatting along the way. After dropping your friend off that, at their house, you head on your own way home. You spend the rest of the evening winding down to mentally prepare for work tomorrow. The hour was in a warm microwave dinner later, you settle down in bed. Alright. So again, this is when we're supposed to have our little meal with a co-worker. 
we're gonna, I guess, overthink. We're gonna, we're gonna, be, we're gonna you know, instead of saying, oh well, you know, we're gonna think about it. You know, the more you think about it, the more uneasy you get. What if he's dead in the ditch somewhere? Well, here we go again with the weird animation where everything is a little bit right. Uh, maybe he got kicked in that while waiting for you. After a few seconds of her thinking, you shake your head. It's easy to assume the worst, because it's actually true, but anyway. But rarely do your anxieties ever come to fruition, except this one time. It actually does. Except for the times that they have, yeah. With a sigh, you send off a text wishing him well. After a bit of thinking, you, do, you decide to accept the money. When you wipe home, you decide to treat yourself to a restaurant you like. Make sure to bring home some leftovers as well. Nothing special, but the food was good at least. So thank you, Coker. Next time you see him, <laughs> if you see him. Hopefully the team project, uh, the next team project you work on will go better too. All right, there you go. So I guess this time, uh, yeah. So I guess this time, instead of confronting our stalker or like com being completely oblivious, uh, we've been slowly collecting the evidence, you know, instead. And I guess we'll see what happens. The week has come to a close and time marches on toward the next day. The day has been as normal as ever with no events standing out. Looks like your lucky streak has come to an end. Maybe the balance of bad luck and good luck has been restored. But is that all there is to it? After everything that's happened, you feel uneasy. Anxiety welled up inside of you. Nothing bad even happened. There's nothing to feel bad about. In fact, you should be grateful that all these good things happened to you. But you can't help it. The anxiety gripped your heart, squeezing it as it beat faster. You felt sick. Suddenly, your surroundings felt overwhelming. Shutting your eyes and covering your ears, you forced yourself to breathe and calm down. Your efforts proved to be futile as your thoughts only raced faster. Taking your phone out, you scroll through social media sites to try and distract yourself. I mean, that, that's, a, that's a horrible way to, you know, calm down anyway. But your mood uh, only worsened. What could you do? As it read in your mind, you suddenly got an ad while watching a video. Feeling depressed? Hopeless like nothing will work out? Does the anxiety you have for the future paralyze you? Seek help. Immediately the, uh, oh, admittedly, the ads sucked, as do all ads that you see on this website. But it got you thinking. Maybe you should give therapy a shot. Surely the anxieties you have are just delusions. You just need to help learning how to cope better. Copium. And hey, who knows, maybe therapy will actually help you out. Calming yourself down a bit more, you start looking to mental health services that are covered by insurance. You know, you should really look into, like, Detective agencies, <laughs> you know, you, you look for the private detective instead of a mental health service. Anyway, eventually you find a good office and set up a starting appointment. Surely things will go well. Surely. True end. See you in therapy. There you go. I guess that's the true ending. Where, you know, you never really prove that he was stalking you this entire time, but you still feel anxious about it and that leads to an anxiety disorder you know in a way and that leads into um chronologically anyway the original game actually the original game that i played previously um dr morgan's counseling session so it kind of leads into that i guess so there you go i guess uh, that's all the endings you know all the different possibilities and i guess the canonical route you know where we learned the backstory of how this uh, wacky character, you know, fell in love with the protagonist in the first place, I guess. Because we just helped him out that one time, you know, isn't that how it always is? In every anime ever. It's like either it's the start of a rom-com or a yandere story, <laughs> you know? There's never an in-between, but anyway. Well, there you go! Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's uh, definitely interesting. I mean, it's, it's as, as I expected, actually. Um, you know, we get a little bit more backstory of, like, uh, the character. Um, we don't really know too much about him in terms of like his actual like personal life, but you know we learn more about why he's like such a weird you know stalker I guess, like the the thing that sparked his um, initial you know uh, purpose I guess or initial like uh, motivation of stalking the character right, and uh, you know more about like just in general about um, the world and everything the context for why the the main character was uh, uh, getting therapy. You know, in an ironic twist, it was because of him, you know, because of this stalker. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, I mean, you know, kind of like, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't want to say typical, but like, you know, it's, it is your kind of like, you know, um, how do you say, it is your just, um, um, I don't know what the word is, <laughs> but the, you know, it, it is your like, 
you know, yeah, there is a story, right? It's, it's a stalker, he's stalking you, you know, it's like everything is like, it's not great. <laughs> it's like, you know, the game portrays it. Um, maybe not realistically, I don't know if that's the right word, but like, it's definitely true, or it's like, you know, it's not exactly a healthy relationship, you know, but um, yeah. It was, it was definitely creepy. It's funny actually, you know, because of the uh, because the variety of the endings. There is definitely an ending where you can just ignore everything. You know, as it turns out, your life is actually better. As it turns out, you just remain, you know, ignorant. You know, that kind of works out. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I feel I don't know if that's a good, you know, moral of the story there because I feel like eventually, I think uh, at some point, you know, Morgan, the 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 unhinged individual that he is, even if you ignore him, eventually it's gonna you know bite you in the ass you know there is going to be consequences eventually i feel like but anyway um but anyway. i like the theme though it's funny how like you know there is like an ending where you could just ignore everything it's because there's a lucky day right so it really fits the theme of the, of the game or the title anyway but yeah an ironic twist um yeah i mean uh i do also like because uh, compared to the last game as well the original game anyway of the initial idea of this character uh the game um Better. This one definitely uh, improved in a few ways. You know, this one, for example, has music. You know, for one, has a bit more music, which is nice. I think the last, the, the original game didn't have music at all, really, or at least maybe one song, but that's it. So it wasn't really, uh, I like it. It was very silent. You know, but this one, they did have uh, that. And this one, obviously, more expanded, had a lot more different choices as well. That's interesting. More branches, you know. And um, the art, um, to be honest, actually, uh, the art is. I don't know, um, maybe not improved, but like, we actually don't see him all that much, you know? He's, he's basically the same character, really. I think he's drawn almost the same way. Um, there might be some subtle improvements that I didn't see. I guess, yeah, I don't know, I'm just looking at like screenshots. I guess, I don't know, I think something about him lo does look a little bit better, I feel like, compared to the original art. I think he's just drawn better, you know? I think it's just... I mean, it's mostly the same, it's like very subtle. Like, I'm not an artist, like, I don't, I don't know why he looks a little bit better, but like, I don't know, maybe his portions just look a little bit better. I don't know. His eyes are just drawn a little bit... ...slightly better. I'm not sure what it is, but like, I, I feel like the, the developer, I think, kind of improved their art just a little bit. And it's just, that's just enough, really, to, you know, think it's actually pretty good, you know? I mean, not that the art was bad initially in the original game either, but I feel like this one definitely improved a little bit. Um, not by much, though, because again, we don't really see him all that much. We, there's not a lot of characters either, it's just him, really. And otherwise, just kind of like some default, like stock photo backgrounds, you know. So, not much art to it, but you know, I guess uh, you know, just to compare it from the last game, you know, definitely improved art. I feel like, um, yeah, mm, the writing as well. I think it's improved. I think it's it's uh, I I, I, I didn't mention it when I did the playthrough initially, at least you know when I put it on YouTube, but I I, I kind of did mention it uh, afterwards when I was done with the game, um. The original game, again, I feel like I'm, I'm comparing, you know, I'm basically just comparing, uh, comparing the games, but the, uh, the original game, uh, Mr. Morgan's Counseling Session, uh, felt like a novel, you know, the way the developer wrote it, it felt like more like a novel than a visual novel. But this game, Lucky Day, actually did feel more like a visual novel, actually, you know, it made it, just like small things, you know, like, uh, for example, in the last game, they put stuff in quotations, which is weird, you know, that's why you would write in a novel, you know, for example, like, in quotations, you know, my name is Morgan. He introduced himself, you know, period. You know, that's like, that's like such a vision. That's such a, like a novel thing, like a book, you know, you're writing a book, but a visual novel, I feel like, I mean, it depends on what you want to do, but like, I feel like a visual novel, um, for, uh, the visual novel format, you gotta have like a slightly different writing style where it feels more like a, um, how do you say? It feels more like a script, you know, like, like, or like an anime, right? An anime show or like a manga, it's more like dialogue heavy. And any kind of narration is more about like action, you know, it's more like, you know, writing like a, like a movie script or whatever, you know, what do you call, I don't know what you call it, like a manuscript or something like that? Sort of, in a way. So you're more describing more like, more like a, more like a show, more than like, a, more than like, like a book, you know? Because writing like a, for a book is it's more different, right? Because there's no visuals, you have to describe every little thing with your five senses, compared to like a visual novel where you can actually just play sounds, you can show the characters doing stuff, you know? I guess that's another thing as well. I guess this game didn't have a lot of CGs. You know, it didn't have like, I mean, it didn't have CGs at all. I don't think like full RCGs anyway. I don't know. That's just kind of expectation I have of vision novels. And obviously not every indie developer needs to do that, but it is an expectation. So I don't know. I feel like it would be more interesting if you were to draw like full art of like, you know, at least the endings or right? whatever happened in the endings or something like that. 
That'd be kind of cool too, but you know, maybe that's asking too much from developer, right? I don't know. At the end of the day, you know, <laughs> they can just do whatever they want. So they don't need to do that, but it would be nice. Um, yeah. Um, anything else? I guess that's it. Uh, I feel like, yeah, again, it's very creepy. Um, not a lot of, like, violent endings. There was that ending with the alleyway where he beat up the co-worker, I guess. That was kind of violent, but, you know, again, no really, no visuals necessarily. Just him all being bloody and all that. Um, otherwise, you know, I feel like uh, the game mostly is just, mostly is meant to be just creepy. You know, it's, that's the idea. At least for most of the endings. And, you know, yeah, I, I think it, uh, did its job, you know, representing this, this creepy guy, you know, just stalking you. Uh... For like the entire week, I guess. So there you go. Uh, I, I enjoyed it. Um, I guess that's it for Lucky Day. I guess uh, if you're if you're on YouTube, you didn't know I stream these games live on Twitch. So check me out over there if you're interested. I also have other playthroughs and channels, so you can look for those if you want. If you haven't yet, um, you can actually uh, watch my playthrough of the original game. You know, which canonically actually is a sequel in a way, right? This is actually the prequel to that game, so you can actually continue the story there. There you go. But uh, thanks for watching. Until next time, see you then.